Welcome back to part three of the 420 Hemi Big Block engine swap. In case you haven't noticed, today we're going to be doing a first start along with a bunch of fabrication. So join us as we take this project to the next level. All right, well, we still have a lot of work to do before we can get to the first start. So this is the state of the engine cradle where the last video ended. The cradle's fairly complete, but it still needs some finishing touches. Before we can go any further, we need to slip the cradle into the car so we can mock up the last motor mount. Well, actually the cradle mount, but you get the idea. This whole powertrain unit isn't very heavy, but it's hard to move around without the engine hoist. Anyway, the unit slides right in and bolts up without a hitch. Now this is the original Honda Insight motor mount, and as you can see, Honda went way off the deep end with the aluminum on this car. Virtually everything, including the car, is made out of aluminum or plastic. But as it turns out, it's going to be too big for our application. So I went shopping on the internet and found this mount. As luck would have it, this is a Honda Civic mount, so at least this part is from the same family. Now as you can see, the mounting bolt's not the right diameter, so we're going to have to fabricate a few bushings to get this mount up to task. This mount's good, but we need to make it gooder, and by that I mean we need to make it actually fit the car. Once we get the mount to fit the car, then we can fabricate some brackets so we can bolt the mount to the cradle. And off camera I whipped up some bushings on the lathe. Let's see how they fit. Not bad. I tell you, that crappy old lathe has got me out of a lot of tight spots. Now that worked out pretty good. Next up are the brackets to tie this whole thing together. We're going to be using this chunk of angle iron and that's going to bolt to the engine cradle. And then we'll use a steel plate to connect the motor mount to the angle iron. Sound good? Alright, let's go ahead and build it. Now it looks like all we need to do is figure out where to drill the bolt holes on the steel plate. Alright, let's use some internet magic and speed this up a little bit. As you can see everything bolts up solid, but I like to weld stuff whenever possible. Also we need to trim back some of the steel plate and round off the edges.
One of the last things we need to do is fabricate some braces to tie the whole cradle together. These braces are essential, but they can also cause a bunch of clearance problems. So both braces are welded in and I made the crossbar bolt in. The crossbar definitely needs to be removable. Anyway, there ended up being a minor clearance problem between the shaft collar and the crossbar, but that can be solved by moving the shaft collar and trimming one of the spacers a little bit. So what do you say we go ahead and paint all this stuff? Well, believe it or not, we're done. Now, there's definitely going to be some more minor fabrication here and there, but all the heavy lifting is finished. Well, I reckon it's time to put this thing together. First, we'll start off with the transmission input shaft adapter. Then of course the aluminum bell housing adapter with the freshly painted engine cradle. Next is the main shaft with the sprocket and chain slack assembly. And now the chain slack adjuster hardware. And yet another bracket to connect the slack adjuster to the cradle. The support bearing slips right in. A few bolts. Some shims. The jack shaft. Whoops, don't forget the drive belt. Let's go to the handheld camera and we'll do a walk around. So the chain's adjusted and the whole jack shaft is locked together with the shaft keys and everything's lined up perfectly. Not too shabby. Here's a closer look at the finished cradle mount. And of course the backside, just to give you an idea how everything fits together. I'm happy to say there are no clearance issues and this thing's easily serviceable. And that'll come in handy in the future. And just like that, the cradle's back in the car. This front mount had to be removed in order to slip the cradle in place, but that's a minor inconvenience. Anyway, I think overall this system is working out perfect. Before we can drop the engine in the car, it has to be mounted to the blue engine plate. I think now's probably a good time to swap in a bigger carburetor jet because you know we're going to be running a different exhaust system. But I can't seem to find any of my 10 millimeter wrenches. Now I'm down to my last one. As a matter of fact, I just ordered a bunch more. Give me that back, you little Mine. F mine. Give me mine. <laughs> Come on, boys, let's get them. Well, what do we got here? Mine. All your 10 millimeter wrenches are mine. What are you going to do about it, tough guy? Uh-oh. All right, let's go ahead and change the main jet on the carburetor. The jet we're going to be using is a number 41. And the reason we're changing the jet is because we will not be using the muffler that came with the engine. As a matter of fact, we'll be custom building a complete exhaust system, and of course the new exhaust will be less restrictive. So the jet's down here, and we'll need to unscrew it with a regular screwdriver. The jet supplied with the engine is a number 39, so clearly we're putting in a larger jet, and that'll keep the engine from running lean when we build the new exhaust system. So that's pretty much it for changing the jet. It ain't brain surgery. 
Before we move on, I want to talk about the altitude compensation kit that comes packaged with the new 420cc engine. Along with the instructions and propaganda that comes with the engine, there's a little kit that allows the end user to modify the carburetor depending on what altitude the engine will be running at. Let's take a closer look. The first bag is for operating the engine at 3,000 to 6,000 feet in altitude, so this would be good for some place like um, Denver, Colorado. The jet they want you to use is a .97 millimeter, and that works out to be about a number 38. And that's going to be pretty much useless for any kind of performance. Unless you live in a high altitude area, then the engine actually just might run. The second bag has a jet to modify the carburetor for 6,000 to 8,000 feet in altitude. The jet supplied is a .95 millimeter, and that works out to be a number 37. Oh, and that's, that's real tiny. Alright, so it looks like these jets are no good for anything we want to do. So the crankshaft bolt on this metric engine is 3 8 fine thread, and I'm using a 2 inch long bolt. It fascinates me that the U.S. officially converted to the metric system in 1975, but you wouldn't know it. Oh sure, American cars have been metric for quite some time now, but everything else has stayed imperial, especially lawnmowers. I reckon if they tried to make this crankshaft thread metric, it'd have a lot of problems in the U.S. Alright, I guess it's time to drop the BIG BLOCK into the Honda. Now this engine's equipped with electric start, and it also has an alternator of sorts. We will of course make all that stuff work, and that'll make our street legal go-kart the ultimate in luxury at least for a go-kart. Now as I explained in the previous video, the idea behind the motor mounting system is to allow the bigger 420cc engine and the smaller 212cc engine to utilize the same engine cradle. Obviously we're dealing with the 420 right now. In the future we'll want to build another motor mount for the smaller engine. If all goes to plan, the engine swaps should only take about an hour or less. All right, well, let's go to the handheld camera. As you can see, the engine is bolted down. The crankcase is filled with oil. And over here, we have three quarters of an inch clearance between the engine and the motor mount. It's a tight fit, but we made it work. Now, the air filter ain't gonna work, but we already knew that. The bad news is, I'm not even sure an aftermarket air filter is gonna fit any better. Oh, and look, a tiny fuel tank, and I bet it has gasoline in it. What do you say we start this bugger up? The drive belt's riding a little high in the pulley, but that can be adjusted out. The good news is, it won't take much to finish the car enough for a road test. Now the bad news is, we're snowed in for at least another week. Now I have a short list of things to do, and we'll cover that in the next video. Now if I can just find my 13mm wrenches, that would be great.